Hello everyone. Welcome to the third video of automated security testing using Zap series. In the first two videos, we have discussed how to perform the passive scan using the Zap client API. We have also gone through the reporting capabilities of Zap client API in detail. Then the agenda for today is uh, we are going to set up the Postman with the endpoints that are part of our demo so that we can understand the prerequisite and responses of those endpoints. And then we are going to execute the active scan using the Zap client API. Coming to the Postman part, here I have already set up a basic collection where I have kept the endpoints which either we have already discussed like wait for passive scan or the endpoints which we are going to discuss as part of our current demo. So wait for PC, uh, passive scan if we have a look into this, uh, this is going to be scan view record to scan. If you remember that uh, we were waiting up for our passive scan to get completed on the basis of this response. That means if record to scan is zero, that means all the uh, all the records has been scanned and our passive scan is completed and this was the method right wait till passive scan is completed and then we were getting the value out of it and then we were waiting till this becomes zero right and similarly we have active scan here as well and let me show you from where i have received uh, i have got these endpoints so if you come to this particular uh, url here you will find all the endpoints which are there these are the ser like services like p scan then a scan core let me go to the p scan uh, first to see our endpoint which we were discussing so here it is record to scan the number of records the passive scan still has to scan okay this is self explanatory and then for active scan let us go to the a scan so guys we need to look into these points uh, like if you see endpoints like few of endpoints are related to view that means we are checking something uh, reading something then some are related to actions that that are triggering something okay then go to the a scan and to start the active scan we need to trigger something that means it will be as part of actions here it is a scan action scan and it will be taking all of these parameters but none of them is required okay so i have already set up this here start active scan a scan action scan and then i have just passed the url on which i want to perform the active scan okay so this is the base uri of like we have our proxy on 8080 localhost so this is our base URI and then JSON this thing is common in each of the endpoints so I have taken it as part of our base URL only and then the endpoint and it will take API key and the URL as a query parameter it can take others as well if you need it but as part of our basic demo let us start with this only So as soon as we trigger it, it says that URL not found. That means there is a prerequisite for the active scan. And the prerequisite is that that we need to add the URL to the scan tree first. Okay, then the question arises why this thing was not required earlier when we performed the passive scan. Because passive scan is something which Jap client API will trigger by default. So as soon as a proxy is set up and uh, we provided that proxy to the driver and then we opened a URL using that particular driver our passive scan started automatically right we didn't add any URL to the scan tree we didn't explicitly uh, trigger the passive scan but in case of active scan both of these things will be required we need to add the URL to the site tree and then we need to trigger the uh, active scan explicitly and for triggering the active scan we have already seen the endpoint then this is the endpoint for adding a url to the scan tree so you need to provide the url which you want to add to the scan tree and if you go to the website here just go to the core uh, core api here it is we can ignore the view one because here as well we are performing some action and yeah here it is core action access url okay it can take two parameters but only one is mandatory the url so i'm going to take this one and i'm going to hit it but before that 
we will be seeing that the scan tree as soon as we hit the request the scan tree uh, will contain a url okay see now it has a url and the url is the same which we have provided here after this now if we trigger the active scan there shouldn't be any uh, error we should get a 200 status code and then we should see active scan getting processed here as well like we were able to see the passive scan here we will be able to see active scan getting started here so the url on which i want to perform the active scan and see active scan and this is the status now how we can track it dynamically for this this is the endpoint as of now it is showing 86 right as soon as it will be 100 percent now it is 100 and it is 100 so we need to wait till the time the status is 100 percent and we are taking the scan id as a query parameter and again this is something which we need to view only right so under a scan for view status you will be able to find this endpoint as well let us see that thing as well so under a scan this is something related to view here it is a scan view status okay so this particular endpoint will help us in tracking the status of our active scan then i think we are left with this these two so get scan tree urls this will be part of our today's demo so let us see this thing as well so this is core view urls this basically gives us all the url which are there under the scan tree okay so core view and urls for this again we need to check our core api core view and urls okay so this is the endpoint uh, now let us move to the intellij and here first of all we'll uh, before starting the active scan now we know the prerequisite we need to add the url to the scan tree we need to verify as well if the uh, url is added to that scan tree or not then we need to perform the active scan we need to fetch the scan id we need to wait till that active scan is completed so let us code this thing now uh, first of all we'll add a method to add the url to the scan tree okay public static void add url to scan tree and we need a url as well so test then the client api reference dot and we know it will be under core dot access url okay so basically it takes two parameter the other one is non-mandatory and here you can set false so it is a boolean parameter but here it is defined as uh, string so we'll pass it as string only false and then it will be throwing an exception so let us add the exception to the method signature now the next step is we need to verify if the url has been added or not static void for that we need to fetch all the urls which are there under the scan tree urls Client API dot core dot URLs and for that's well and it will give us a reference of API response. Okay, if you remember here what it is giving it is giving us a list right so we need to fetch it in the form of list only list of responses let me show you how it is done so for this we need api response instead of element now we need a list okay because here we are getting a list of in the form of urls and then we need to extract it 
dot the method get items okay and this will give us give us the list of api responses And now we need to return so instead of void it will be list of string because we need all the URLs so here it, let us do it with the help of stream API for that we need responses dot stream dot map okay we will convert each of this response to the URL the will fetch the value okay value of each of the response and for this thing which we have already done like how to take the value out of a API response this is the method okay this is the way to do it again map so we'll have the first response will extract the API response element We need one braces here, one here, and then R dot get value. That's it, and then collection. We will collect it as a list. Okay, so now we are sorted. We we'll, here we will have a list of all the URLs which are under our scan tree. So now we can also verify it if get dot contains site to test that's out has been added scan tree so this is the prerequisite for our active scan now we are done with these things else we can throw a runtime exception because otherwise we are blocked so here we can throw a runtime exception throw new runtime exception decide to test not added entry active scan will not be possible that's it now we after the uh, doing these two things we will be able to add the url to the scan tree now we need to perform the active scan ecstatic wait Perform active scan and for this client API dot a scan dot scan and we need to pass the parameters now there are multiple parameters which I have already mentioned here as well so we can take these parameters Can mention it here okay inside to test we know it will come from our this particular as an argument string side to test okay and we'll add all the parameters here and let us fetch the scan ID as well this we will be needing to see if the active scan has been completed or not So API response scan and let us add the exception to the method signature. These are all the non mandatory parameters and we'll see the detail of these parameters as well in our upcoming demo. But as part of our this demo, let us do end to end flow of active scan.
okay for this this is the only mandatory parameter side to test okay as we have seen here as well like when we performed active scan we didn't pass anything else but we'll get to know in our future uh, demo that what is the role and significance of each of these parameters so now we need a scan id right we need to have a scan id to see if the active scan is completed so i can either call the method to wait here like wait till the active scan is completed or just like the way we did it in our passive scan we can call that method from our test method as well but why to do so let us uh, mention it here only so wait till active scan is completed there why we didn't do it because that was not under our control right basically wherever we are triggering any scan we should wait till that scan is completed there only but as in the passive scan we were not triggering it it was being triggered by the proxy itself so that's why we explicitly like within our test method had to wait till that uh, scan is completed so i'll create a method here which will wait till this active scan is completed okay and now for this we know that we need to use the scan id and then this is the view status method so we'll do one thing here again client api dot a scan dot status scan id okay and it will give us api response equal to this method signature and it give us only one single api response element so no list is required nothing else so we need to just do it in the same way as we did it for our passive scan just one api response element we need to extract okay so for that api response element and api response so it will give us a string dot get value okay and the string is status so if you remember we need to wait till this status become 100 while status is not status equals it is a string then let us do it like this while status is not equal to 100 we need to evaluate status again and again just copy this and we need to call it again as well otherwise we will be reading the same response again and again and if the response is 86 then every time it will give us 86 only so we'll need to call this again this particular endpoint to see the fresh value the latest recent value and then again we need to extract it and we can remove it from here okay so as soon as status will become 100 this condition will become false and will be out of the loop and here we can mention just like the way we have mentioned in our passive scan active scan is in progress and here test out active scan has completed so now we can go to our test class and create a method here to perform the active scan public void test active scan and we need to add the url to the scan tree and we need to perform the active scan okay 
and guys as of now we haven't done the handling of running both of these scans in a single run because for both of these scans uh, two different reports are required we also need to clean the scan tree after each run so that the alert of previous runs do not come into the report of the second run so let me comment the things related to passive scan and we'll see this thing uh, in our future demos as well that how we can run both of these scans together but for now let us focus only on the active scan and we do not need to set the proxy uh, for active scan as we are directly doing everything from the jap client okay and as we discussed earlier that active scan we will be performing only on the local host applications because in active scanning http messages do get modified to simulate the attacks right so for that thing we will be only using the local host web application for active scanning okay now i just need to comment this thing as well now we are all sorted we just need this thing this thing and this thing for the active scan We'll keep an eye on jab tool as well here we should be able to see a site getting added and here we will be able to see the status of the active scan so the active scan is in progress and see we can see that as of now it is 86 percent active scan is in progress and once it is completed we will be able to see the message that active scan has completed okay and as soon as active scan is completed we can see the report and if we go to the alerts present in the jab so there is just one alert right and which we can see in the report as well but let me show you one more scenario where you will be seeing different sites here right because in the back end there are several sites which runs if you are opening it through the browser let me show you and then we will see that how we can exclude certain urls from getting into the scan tree for that let me uncomment this thing okay and let me uncomment this as well I'll clean the scan tree. I'll close this thing out and I'll re execute the test case. Okay, browser has opened. Active scan is in progress. Let me move to the jab. 86 percent see you can see the redundant websites are coming in here and we do not want to you know get the alert from this though our report uh, we have specifically mentioned that we just want the alerts related to a specific site this one okay that's why we do not have the other alerts in our report but those uh, urls are available in our scan tree and the alerts related to these urls are also present see here okay and these are some redundant urls that we can exclude from here tools options and global exclude urls so here you can provide the urls in the form of regex like whichever urls you want to avoid from getting into the scan tree just provide them in the form of you uh, regex expression and just check all the urls like these are the four common urls which are normally i have observed are coming into the scan tree and which are not related to the website on which i am performing the scan so i will exclude this from here click on ok now i will again clean this So we'll again run the test. 
and we'll verify that this time there shouldn't be any redundant URL into the scan tree. Yeah, so scan is completed and if we see under the scan tree, there is no redundant URL. Okay, so apart from this, there is one more way in which we can achieve the same thing. That is uh, what we have seen in the last video as well, using the context. So we can have a context here, we can exclude the URLs. Okay, just right click on the URL and exclude from context and there you can select the context uh, in which you want to from which you want to exclude that particular URL and then you can use that context as a context ID into the active scan. Similarly, there is policies as well, right? We discussed in the last video that uh, there are certain policies that we can create. So these policies as well, we can use into the active scan. So that we will see in the upcoming videos. And this is it for the today's demo. If we come to the agenda, so we have seen that how we can create Postman collections for the various JAP endpoints using this particular URL, right? And then we try to understand how to perform the active scan using the Postman and we try to understand what all prerequisites are there. After understanding the prerequisite, we performed following four things using the JAP client API that we added a URL to the scan tree. We verified whether the URL has been added or not. We performed the active scan and then we waited dynamically till that active scan got completed. So these are all the things which we have discussed today and talking about the things which we will be covering in the future demo jar. We'll create the contexts using the JAP client API. We'll try to understand various parameters which are there into the active scan like uh, policies, then context IDs, etc. We'll run both active and passive scan together. Okay will generate the separate reports because for both of these uh, if we are running two scan of course we'll be needing two different reports for both and after each run we will be cleaning the scan tree so that the alert from the previous run are not coming into the report of the second run then in the end we'll replace all the jap client api method with the rest assured okay so that's it for this video guys I'll leave all the relevant content in description section. In case you have any question, any feedback, any suggestion, please leave the same in the comment section. And if you are liking the content that I'm making, please like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Thank you.